Hey guys, I'm Amber. I'm going to talk about magnets, specifically ferromagnets magnets and electromagnets. So I've had a lot of fun studying them and I'm really excited to teach you guys. But first I just wanted to start out by talking about magnets in general. So as you can see and everyone knows, each magnet has a north and a south pole. And if these north poles line up or these south poles, then they're going to repel or push apart. And then if they're flip-flop, meaning the north and the south are next to each other, they're going to attract and the magnets are going to fly together. So I'm sure you guys have all experienced this, you know, when you have two magnets, you're trying to get them together and you're pushing and they just won't go together. Or you have two magnets and all of a sudden they fly together and you can't get them apart. So it's just showing unlikes attract, likes repel. And then also I wanted to say that um, if you break a magnet in half, it's not like, oh, now you have a south pole and just a north pole magnet, but you actually have two new magnets. So each with their own south and north pole. So you break one into two, then you break two into four and so on, even down to the tiniest little atom. And these magnetic atoms each act like tiny little magnets and now they have their own north and south poles. So that gets us into ferromagnets and ferromagnets are pretty much your everyday magnet. They're made from metals. They have magnetic properties. The most common one is iron, which is why it's called a ferromagnet because ferro in Latin means iron. So these ferromagnetic materials all have strong magnetic properties and they can respond to magnets or they can even be magnets themselves. And we'll talk about that more in a second. But the ferromagnetic materials have both macroscopic scales and microscopic scales like you can see in this picture. So on the microscopic scale, it means that even the little tiny atoms in the ferromagnetic material actually act like these small magnets. So picture tiny little atoms and they all have magnetic properties with their own north and south poles like you guys saw on the slide before. And these um, atoms actually have magnetic moments that come from the motion of, of its electrons. And these tiny atoms have a direction of magnetism and can arrange themselves into small units that are called domains. And each domain, although it's microscopic in size, contains millions of billions of atoms and they all of these atoms are aligned in the same direction like you can see here. And if you get a bunch of domains together, um, then you're, you know, on the macroscopic scale. So as you can see, these domains are not aligned. They have some going up, down, to the right, to the left, and um, so this is just like your ferromagnetic material. So all these domains make up the ferromagnetic material, but it's not magnetic because it has all these different magnetic properties going in different directions, right? So what can happen is if you put a magnetic field, say over here, all of these domains, all the little atoms and all the domains can actually line up to all point in the same direction. And when that happens, then you, you know, you get your permanent magnet. So, <clears throat> Um, all of these domains can swing around to point in the same direction, and we're going to talk about how we can make that permanent magnet, or um, let's say, you know, this becomes a magnet. It's all going in this direction. Now we're going to say, okay, what if we take away that magnetic field? What can we do so that this stays a magnet? So there is a way to make these permanent magnets, and, you know, say you want this piece of iron, like is shown here, you want this piece of iron to be a magnet forever then there's things you can do to make that happen. So this picture is basically showing what I just showed on the slide previously, but all of these domains going in different directions and then, you know, they can slowly, gradually, you know, flip to the same direction and then you have your one north and south pole. So that can be done by putting this material, this magnetic material in between a magnetic field. So this will have a south pole, this will have a north pole now, and then you can heat up this iron bar or whatever the metal is and then cool it or just tap it in the presence of these um, magnets and that will actually create a permanent magnet that you know will stay a magnet so um that's kind of cool you, you know you have a way to just make a magnet out of these you know these pieces of, of metal especially um iron so as we so well learned in physics 106 the source of all magnetism is current so this will be easy to see as um, I explain electromagnets because it's literally running electrical current through metal to make a magnet. But I also wanted to point it out for ferromagnets because it might be hard to see how it runs on currents. But all the tiny little atoms in the ferromagnet is actually an elementary electromagnet in that um, these electromagnets are produced by the motion of electrons about its nucleus and by the spin of its electrons. 
So even these tiny little ferromag or even these ferromagnets have these tiny little atoms, and they each have their electrons moving in a certain direction. And this electrical mo or this movement of electrons creates this current, which produces these magnetic properties. So even ferromagnets have their magnetic property thanks to electrons that create a current. So on to electromagnets. Um, like I said, these magnets run all electricity. So um, it's actually an electric current that makes up these magnets. So they're going to take a metal bar, like right here it's an iron metal bar, they're going to wrap a, a wire around it, and then they're going to run a current through that water, through that wire, excuse me, and that will create an electromagnet. So like we learned about the second right hand rule, you can find the way the current is moving, is you know, you point your thumb up and then or in the direction of the magnetic field and then you wrap your fingers um, around and you can see that this current is moving up just like that and coming out to this side. So something that's a little different about electromagnets when compared to ferromagnets is that the strength of the electromagnet can actually be changed because you can determine how much current is run through the wire and it, the current can also be reversed which flips the north and the south pole. You can change the way that the electrons flow. So I thought that was something interesting. So I want to talk about a few examples and just quickly, but um, right here, your ferromagnets, like I said before, it's kind of just your everyday magnet, your general magnet, um, what we think of when we think magnet, ones you put on the fridge, the buckyballs that you play with as a kid, those kind of things. And then your electromagnets, you can kind of see more of these real world applications. So starting out with like the MRI machine, it's actually a huge electromagnet that sends elect electricity through solenoid loops of wire and that causes a magnetic field and it forces the protons in the body that's inside the MRI machine to align with that field so you can get that, imagi that um, imaging. And then right here you can see electromagnets are also used to make electromagnetic motors, also generators, loudspeakers, things like that. Then you can see in this metal separation tool um, this metal part acts as the core and there's a wire running through it and that actually attracts, you know, this metal and the garbage and pulls it out. So, you know, um, electromagnets are used everywhere, um, even in these, um, magnetic separating tools. So, for the rest of my video, um, I took a chemistry lab class, I really liked it. We made ferrofluid, which relates to the ferromagnets I was talking about because it's basically, um, a ferromagnet and fluid mixed together. So I redid this experiment to show you guys um, an example of how these ferromagnets work and especially this ferrofluid. And um, these ferromagnet, ferromagnets have a strong environment in them that display permanent magnetism like I talked about. So if you put that with the liquid you can make a ferrofluid. So it's literally making, mixing this idea of a ferromagnet and liquid and you're making a fluid that's magnetic. So um, these ferromagnets actually, like you can see, or sorry, these ferrofluid can actually make spikes like is shown in this picture. And um, these little magnetic fields turn these particles into tiny magnets and they can actually move around like you'll see later in my experiment. But the magnetic field and the gravity and the surface tension all that allow these particles to um, make spikes. So it's really cool, really fun to play with this. So let's get on to the experiment. So, like I just explained, we're going to do an experiment making ferrofluid. So, if you combine a ferromagnetic substance with a liquid, you can get a ferrofluid. So, like you can see, I'm in a lab, it's not really something you can do at home, and I'm going to put on the correct protective gear. But, first I'm going to walk you guys through the experiment and tell you how it's going to go, and then do a time lapse of me doing the whole thing, and then at the end we're going to do another video showing you guys what we made. So, and what you can kind of do with it. So first, we're starting out with obviously the ferromagnetic substance which is um, iron chloride and then we're going to mix that with hydrochloric acid and after we mix that with a stir plate in a beaker we are going to slowly add ammonia and that will make a black precipitate of magnetite form. So once we've done that we'll turn off the stir plate, we'll remove the stir bar and then we're going to add a small amount of water and kind of like rinse it off and then we're going to place a magnet at the bottom and it will kind of bring all of that magnetite down so that we have the black precipitate on the bottom of the of the beaker and then once that's been done we can remove the magnet and um, place all of the magnetite in a plastic container 
Once it's been transferred and rinsed a few times to make sure we have all of the magnetite, we are going to add um, a solution of tetramethyl ammonium hydroxide. And this is kind of, kind of going to allow that um, the magnetite to set and stabilize. And once we've done that, we're basically done. So we'll just, you know, remove the excess fluid and then you have your fair fluid. And it's gonna take a little bit longer than that, than I just explained, but um, we'll do a quick time lapse and then you guys can see like the different spikes that are formed like you guys saw in the picture on, on the slideshow. So here we go. So there's the time lapse of the experiment I did, and here's the fair fluid I made. So as you can see, with all these magnets, it's kind of just this liquid substance. Um, but as soon as the magnet's there, it allows the iron in the ferro fluid to kind of um, get those magnetic properties, and it can interact with the magnet and form kind of that bubble that you guys can see at the bottom. Hopefully you guys can see it. Well, it's kind of hard with this vial, but um, ferrofluid is super fun to play with. It's really cool. And I hope you guys can see this in the video, but it forms these spikes. I think you guys can see that, right? Kind of those spikes that it's forming um, when it interacts with the magnet. And it kind of looks just like the picture that I had when I explained the experiment. But yeah, it's super cool. You can put magnets on both sides and like it'll shoot across. And um, yeah, so the ferrite fluid, this fluid can actually take on these magnetic properties, which is really cool. So yeah, that was a fun experiment. Hopefully you guys just learned a little bit more about magnets and um, hopefully the ferrofluid fluid was just another example of maybe something you hadn't heard of. But um, I really hope you guys enjoyed learning more about magnets and that you can just appreciate it more. It, magnets are really an incredible part of physics and of our everyday lives. So thanks for watching guys.